strong storms are about to eject into our country. That could include large hail, damaging winds, and also the chances for some tornadoes. Back over in the Atlantic, we have Gabrielle out over here in the Atlantic. This is going to be a fish storm. And then back over here, we have a sneaky little area of low pressure that as of right now has a bunch of dry air to combat with, but it, it can survive all the way to the north of the Caribbean without completely dying. Some of our models are saying that this could be a close approach or a threat to the United States. What's that, Gabrielle? You want everybody to like and subscribe to this video? They haven't even watched the video yet. What if they don't like it? Whoa, 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 calm down, calm down, oh my goodness. Anyway, let's get started with the video. So across the United States, as you guys can see here on the map, we currently have a low pressure approaching out in the Pacific. We have some generally higher pressure than would typically be happening this year. And as we push this forward, as you can see, we are eventually gonna see, as we move into the about 22nd and the 23rd a trough eject pretty much from Canada all the way down into the United States mainly back down over here into Nebraska parts of Kansas it's gonna bring some of that moisture out of the Gulf of Mexico up into the United States and also some cooler and drier air on the backside creating a little bit of a battle zone here for Oklahoma Kansas maybe even parts of Missouri Iowa and Nebraska and as you can see it is a pretty tight circulation there but if we come over here to the euro model you can see that we do have some differences not only in timing of this ejection but also just how strong our low pressure system is gfs it's a little bit more bullish uk met is kind of on the board here with the gfs and then the euro model has it weaker and further to the west but generally it does seem we're going to have a low pressure come through and when the low pressures come through we usually see an increase of showers thunderstorms and potentially some severe weather again this is on the 23rd here now if we come up over to our upper level winds you can see that the GFS is indicating a little bit of a trough ejection. You can see our wind barbs are starting to part ways really right around into Kansas going into Oklahoma as well. That's going to be the focus for our storms. And we could definitely get an increase not only in severe weather, but maybe also a little bit of a tornado chance. But look at this pulling over to the Euro. You can see that ejection is a lot weaker, a lot more subtle, but still some severe thunderstorms could exist. Maybe not as much of a tornado threat with the Euro solution. UK met is kind of similar to the gfs but a lot weaker further up you go to the north you see there's not a whole lot of wind speeds up here but mainly down over into like the northeastern corner of oklahoma and going into kansas as well so there's agreement that the trough will be there and that there will be some flow aloft so we definitely got to watch out over the next couple of days for some severe weather and then again this is just for the 23rd this is going to actually increase and move off to the east as we move further into the week next week let's come down over here to the 850 millibar winds as you can see even on the gfs where we have more of an organized trough you can see that a lot of our lower level winds are displaced off here to the east euro model has it over there near into oklahoma and the uk met has it kind of displaced off to the east too into parts of arkansas and missouri one of the things that we are going to have to keep an eye on out here is for some convective inhibition. We could have the ingredients in place, but if this capping inversion is too strong, storms probably won't be able to get started. And as you can see, there's a little bit of a disagreement here between the GFS and the UK met, but overall, that does seem to be a problem that we are going to be faced with these storms. So there's not a guarantee that they will fire, but we got to keep an eye on it. Lapse rates that kind of dictate the strength of our updrafts indicate that we are going to have around seven to six degree lapse rates out here, which would be enough to support the potential for some damaging winds and some large hail. When you factor in those lower level winds as well, definitely seeing a corridor here where we could have increased severe weather and also maybe a tornado chance. Coming over to our storm relative helicity here on the GFS, you can see that we could have anywhere from 100 to maybe even up to 500 storm relative helicity, which means there's going to be a decent amount of spin as this ejects and we start to see some storms fire. Now, if we come over to the Euro model, you can see over the next couple of days, generally, we're going to have some thunderstorms really from Texas all the way up into the Midwest. And as I continue to push this forward, you see, eventually we start to see that trough eject right up here. We could see some thunderstorms going into the beginning to late afternoon here. 
here on the 22nd and then as we come into the later in the day you see those thunderstorms push down to the south and east as we go through the morning morning convection could be a problem you can see that kind of overlaps with the afternoon convection with a little bit of convective convective sorry inhibition that could spell a problem but you know there are some indications here from the euro that thunderstorms could actually get going and if that does happen well, that storm relative felicity does seem like some severe weather and maybe even a tornado chance could be possible we come over and look at our day three outlook we do have a large area where severe weather could be possible really from oklahoma all the way up into nebraska i do believe that that could extend a little bit further down to the south and east but this is mainly for the 22nd so again that's gonna be that first ejection of the trough a little bit further to the north sending down to the east basically the beginning of our event but it won't really get started like what we were looking at the models was the next day and as you can see we don't really have much of anything on our day four day five or day six because that predictability and the disagreement into our models you know if it's like more like the euro it's not going to be as bad but if it's you know more like the gfs we could see an increase maybe even into a slight risk with the max probabilities at least in my head being like a five percent tornado risk but that is not all as this trough continues to eject off to the east as we get into the next day the 24th you can see that we still have a decent amount of flow aloft around a low pressure system potentially centered over missouri this is going to cause widespread thunderstorms really all the way from illinois down through kentucky into alabama mississippi throughout the day of the 24th going into the 25th fit but on this day in particular we have even more disagreement you can see here between the gfs and the euro the euro still has that low pressure system all the way back into kansas with still some flow aloft not a whole lot of spreading part of those wind vectors which means there's not a whole lot of forcing so that could be a fly in the ointment for any real organized severe weather threat but the gfs uh, and the uk met is showing you know some forcing some indication of a severe weather threat now if the gfs is right probably a lot more elevated if the euro is right not too much that's why they don't really have a slight risk on the day four or day five forecast is because again there's a lot of disagreement between our models that's pretty vast now if you come down to our 800 millibar winds you can see the ge or the gfs has a decent amount of lower level winds anywhere from like 20 to 30 almost 40 knots of those lower level winds if we view a sounding here you can see we have nice curve photograph turning with height a little bit of a cnih which is a convective inhibition and around 700 joules per kilogram but with enough shear that might be enough in a low cape environment to still cause tornadoes one of the things that's pretty evident though on that sounding is that lapse rates are going to be really low going into this day and in the southeast that usually spells a disaster when it comes to a tornado threat in terms of the tornado threat not being able to be real but we got to keep an eye on this if the euro starts to trend more in this direction then uh, we could have a little bit more of an organized storm if not then again maybe some marginal damaging winds and hail now if we come over to where our instability will be you can see that there is an axis here on the gfs and if you look at the model trends here you can see that it, it has been on the uptrend for a little bit but now we're getting in a small downtrend of that instability so again we're still about four to four, four to five days out from this happening so i wouldn't get overly concerned severe weather changes a lot in the short term when it comes to model runs but it's definitely something to keep an eye on just in case this trough ejects and we really start to get some agreement of a stronger trough so just make sure you guys are weather aware out there the conditions are present for something we're just not exactly quite sure what yet definitely some severe weather that's one thing we can say for sure now when it comes to the tropics as of right now we do have tropical storm gabrielle still out there you can see that there is some circulation a lot more convective activity so it's definitely organizing as a storm a latest cone of uncertainty though brings us well away from the united states expected to become a hurricane just to the east of bermuda and then get slung shot away so like our forecast a couple of days of this being a fish storm has come true thankfully peak intensity though of our storm gabrielle could get up to even category one or category two strength some models indicating category three really just depends on how it deals with the shear environment as it interacts with the trough as it moves up to the to the north but definitely some more strengthening to be had with gabrielle over the next couple of days but other than that we have kind of a, a non-threatening looking low pressure system that has come off of Africa and if I push the GFS forward you can see that it doesn't really form into anything in the short term so really not a whole lot of confidence in this storm a high pressure system sinking down to the south is going to cause a little bit of a stronger shear environment and also some drier air for this storm to combat 
as it moves off to the west. But as I push this forward, you can see that eventually it does try to form into something close to the United States as we move into about 10 days out. This is the range of inaccuracy. We're getting pretty close to where we can start trusting this model, especially if we have some agreement. If we come over here to the Euro model, you can see that it too also likes the idea of some sort of low pressure system forming close to the United States. But all the buzz over the last couple of days has been about this model. This is actually an AI model, an unproven model, but this year it has been pretty decent, at least with the tropical weather. So it's definitely worth keeping an eye on. As I push this forward, you can see that it wants to bring this a lot further to the south, has this thing trying to develop near the Bahamas, and then brings it pretty close to the United States as a hurricane over the next 10 to 11 days. We come back into previous runs, you can see that it has been pretty consistent on this system but as you can see it was like that a little while ago with this low pressure system in the Caribbean a couple runs ago but then you could see that slowly has kind of gone away in future model runs so again this is a big test for our AI model runs are they more reliable in the long range or are they going to be kind of like the GFS sometimes spitting out fantasy storms given that we're 10 days out there's really no point to even worrying about this storm yet it's just something to monitor over the Atlantic over the next couple of days just to kind of see what will happen as it continues to move off to the West closer to the United States. One thing does seem pretty certain, at least with our latest model runs, is that something could develop close to the United States. But again, will it be a hurricane this close or will it be some weak subtropical low that is an out to sea storm? Those questions still remain unanswered. Now, in terms of temperatures across the United States today, going to be still relatively warm over here near the Ohio Valley and down into the southeast and into Texas. But eventually, as that trough starts to eject, that's when we're going to start to see these temperatures change a little bit for some folks. Like as we get into the 22nd, we are going to see some 90s start to reach back up into Kansas, Nebraska, getting up over there into Iowa, maybe even some 100 degree temperatures down there into Texas. But check this out. As I push this forward and that trough really starts to eject it brings a lot cooler temperatures over here into Colorado Wyoming Nebraska going into Kansas even into Oklahoma and into parts of Texas and then as I continue to push this forward you can see that might see a little bit of an increase here for Dallas just to the west of Houston up to 100 degree temperatures as well as we move into the 23rd and as I continue to push this forward you can see that that trough really ejects down into Oklahoma Arkansas and also into the southeast where we are going to see a cool down as that trough ejects into this area potentially down into the 70s 60s widespread across the Ohio Valley going up into the Great Lakes even Texas cooling down into the 80s in the peak heating hours and as I continue to push this forward into the 26th my birthday you see that it stays relatively cool so a nice little shot of colder air potentially some severe weather maybe even the potential for tornadoes but that cooler air is actually some good news so if we can get that euro kind of solution where we don't have as much of an organized trough this cool down is not going to be as drastic and we're going to avoid that major severe weather and it might just be some good news, some good rain for folks that need it, because I'm not sure if you guys know this, but we got a lot of drought starting to pick up over here into the southeast, going up into parts of the Ozarks and the Ohio Valley. So if we can get a lot of rain with this next storm, that would actually just mainly be good news with that cool air. Thank you, everybody, so much for tuning in for this forecast, and I will see you guys on the next one. Peace.